Now I'm going to show you how to use divide pattern um, to create a pantograph from a, a close pattern. So I've got a 30 by 30 block here that I want to put a pantograph in. So I'm add edit pattern, add pattern, pantograph, use current block. And I'm going to choose sparograph. I get the message, this is not a pantograph pattern, do you want to convert it? Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, I'm going to customize this. So I'm going to change my number of loops to six. And I'm going to change the spread so there's not such a big hole in the middle. Uh, let's change. Uh, mm, yes, that six is good. So I'm going to hit finished. So now I'm straight away on the open divide pattern page and I want it set to divide, mode divide. And I'm going to move my uh, divide line until I see the targets at the widest point of the pattern, which I think it looks looks like it's about there. Um, sometimes using the grid can help you find that. Most of the time you can just eyeball it. Now you can see that part of the pattern again is green and part is red. So that means the green part will stitch and then the red part will stitch. The pattern is going to be divided in two. And because this is going to be a pantograph, it will stitch the green and then the next green and then the next green and then the next row will be made up of reds, repeats of the red part of this pattern. Okay, so I like that. I'm going to hit finished. Okay, it's made the row heights 12. It looks a complete mess. I'm immediately, because this is just a small quilt, I'm going to make the row heights much smaller. So I'm going to make them three inches. Now remember, each half of that pattern is one row. It's not what I expected to see. So in order to get what I expected to see, I'm going to change the gap just dramatically. I'm using my finger do the other way. I want to open up the gap so I can see. Now you can see the two parts of the pattern, right? So now I'm going to have to use shift in conjunction with gap to get this pattern correct. So let's use shift first and we will, can you see what's happening? The second rows, uh, the even numbered rows are moving upwards, all right? Now if I move them all the way up until it makes the pattern I expect, we're going to have a great big gap between the rows. Let me get, let me get that up there. Oop, wrong one. Okay. There's too much space between those rows. I need to close them up. If I use gap, it's not going to close it up correctly. So again, I'm going to use shift um, to bring that second one down. Sometimes it's faster with your finger. All right. So now let's use gap this way. And I'm closing up the gap. Oh, that worked pretty well. So you can see I closed up the gap. The pattern is how I expect. Let me zoom in to where these two rows meet. I need to close that gap up a little bit more. There we go. Let's zoom out, to zoom full. So there it is as a panto. Now how this will stitch is this. Let's go on, I'll set the stitching sequence so you can see. Um, so quilt. This will be the first pattern to stitch. Just part. Continue. This will be the second pattern to stitch. Continue. Ah, it's not to cut throats. This will be the third. This will be the fourth. So, uh, and you would carry on. So you can see how the pattern is divided into two. So the complete pattern is made up of two passes. Okay, so that's creating a pantograph from a closed pattern.